Let's try to understand the SAP architecture a little bit. The system is called as R3 system, a three-tier system which is divided into three layers namely database, application, and presentation. The database layer stores all the tables and schema inside SAP from where the data is fetched and displayed onto the presentation layer via different transaction codes. The presentation layer is where all the transactions are performed by the user and day-to-day -day postings occur inside SAP, also called as front-end. The application layer is sort of a staging server where the SAP application logic, server folder structure, logs and files are stored. It is a medium between the database and the presentation layer. First picture shows the table residing at the database layer. Second picture gives a view of different files stored on server at application layer, and third picture depicts the transaction code in SAP at presentation layer, and by the way we can view all three of these layers from SAP logon or GUI. The organizational structure in SAP differs from company to company, but this is what it generally looks like. We divide it into two parts, on the right hand side. We have HR org structure while on the left we have the operations org structure. The HR org structure consists of org key, personnel area and sub area, which gets divided further into employee group, position and org unit. The HR organizational structure relates to different positions, payroll area and sub units inside a company. The operations structure is divided into different locations which are being operated inside a company such as plant warehouse, stores etc. This is again customizable and depends upon company to decide the levels of drill down in their org structure. Lastly in the middle, we have company code which is the topmost level in any SAP org hierarchy. We can have multiple company codes in SAP system depending upon the requirement for that particular company and each company can have their own hierarchy. General table structure for SAP tables is created keeping with following things in mind, header and item tables are different having one to n relationship between them and there are history tables for all important business processes to track the changes made to them. There are also log table inside SAP which we will discuss later on upcoming videos. Every business process be it procure to pay, order to cash or, AR and AP has a well-defined table guidelines and rules which are similar in all the cases. Let's dive briefly into SAP tables before going to the process model. Remember this is not an exhaustive list, the fields and columns keep on changing slightly from company to company, but this is what we will definitely find in all places. Vendor master data resides in LFA1 and LFB1 tables and is joined using a common key called LIFNR, that is, vendor number. LFB1 holds the vendor and the company while LFA1 holds all the other details for a vendor. Purchase requisition data resides in a bin table and holds all the details in it. The field BA and FN is the purchase requisition number and B and FPO are items added to it. When a purchase order is created, Mostly it's against a requisition, hence in Eben we have EBELN and EBELPSPO number and item updated against the requisition number which are linked to the purchase order tables EKKO and EKPO. This creates a common linkage between the PR and PO in SAP tables. The PO header table EKKO and the PO line item table EKPO are linked via the purchase order number field namely EBELN in SAP. The PO history table EKBE holds the records of all the transactions occurred against a PO at the item level. From this table we can figure out the receipts as well as the invoices posted against a PO among other things of interest. This table is again linked via the PO number and the item to the EKKO and DKPO. It is one of the most significant tables inside SAP. Before receiving the goods from the vendor, we create a scheduling agreement between the company and the vendor. This agreement holds the schedule line items which are agreed upon by both the parties. This is stored in schedule line agreement table namely EKET. 
This holds the different delivery dates and quantities at line item level which is agreed upon in the scheduling agreement for this particular material in the PO. This table is again linked with PO item and header tables via the purchase order number EBELN and the item number EBELP. This table is also used for determining open or closed status of a PO. The invoice data is part of the RBKP header table and the RSEG line item table. The header is linked to the invoice item table via the invoice number field namely BELNR. The invoice line item table also holds PO header and line item numbers. At the time of posting an invoice in ASAP, this number gets updated with the PO header and item against which the invoice is posted. The accounting data inside SAP is part of the BSEG item and BKPF header table. This holds all the accounting documents inside SAP irrespective of the business process involved. There is a field in BKPF table called as AWKEY, which provides a common linkage between the invoice and the accounting document generated against it. The payment terms master table contains the definition and description of the payment terms which are part of vendor master, purchase order, contracts and invoice data inside SAP. We will delve deep into this table and its field in upcoming videos. The vendor payment tables BSAK and BSIK contains the clearing or the payment documents, against the invoice accounting documents inside SAP. Both the tables differ slightly considering their usage. The BSAK table contains full clearing documents as in the invoices which are fully paid or cleared while the BSIK table contains the partial clearings, that is the half or somewhat paid invoices. The total vendor payments would be the cumulative sum of the payments which are part of both these tables. They are directly linked to accounting table based on the document number. The procure to pay data model starts from EKPO the PO item table in the middle joined to the EKKO the PO header table using the purchase order number EBELN. The vendor master LFA1 and LFB1 are joined with each other using the vendor number LIFNR, which in turn joins with the PO header table using the same vendor number present in the EKKO table. The PO history and the PO scheduling agreement tables EKBE and DKET respectively, joins with the PO item table EKPO using the purchase order number and the item number the GRN receipt header MKPF and the line item table MSEG, connects with each other using the material document number MBLNR. The item table also holds the PO number and line item against which this GRN document number is posted which in turn joins this receipt number to the purchase order number in EKPO table. The invoice header table RBKP joins with the line item table RSEG using the invoice number BELNR which also holds the PO number and the line item number which can be joined to EKPO. Hence the purchase order is the unique element that joins the invoice and GRN receipt numbers posted against a PO. This is also called the three-way match. The accounting document header table BKPF holds a generated key field called as AWKEY which gets linked to the invoice header table to get the accounting document against an invoice. The vendor payment tables BSAK and BSIK holds the clearing or payment document number against an invoice and are linked to accounting header table BKPF using the document number BELNR. The payment terms table is linked to PO, invoice and vendor tables using payment terms field Z term along with its description. Thanks for watching and remember the name Data Yogi, practicing yoga with data. Next we will start the sequel series from simple to advance using the procure to pay, SAP data to bring out insights and analytics from it and learn the technical skills as well.